Good morning, church family. Yeah, it was kind of quiet there for a second. Good morning, community of faith watching us and worshiping with us uh, this beautiful fall morning. Uh, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is in this house today. I want you to know that. Isn't that a great thing to know? Amen. Amen. All right. We wish to welcome everyone this morning, and, and we thank the uh, visitors for choosing uh, to worship with us today. We are certainly happy that they're here with us. Uh, there'll be the charge conference today, a uh, meeting tonight, I should say, at 6.30. Uh, all members are welcome and encouraged to come. That's tonight at 6.30, so be here or be square. Uh, that dates back, doesn't it? <laughs> all right, we congratulate Lois Cecil. Where's Lois? Hi, Lois. We congratulate uh, Lois Cecil and the rest of the United Methodist team. Yeah. All right. You, you, you know what I'm going to say. For making it not a repeat, not a three-peat, but a four years in a row for being the top church for fundraising for Crop Walk. Uh, we surpassed the second place church. Yeah. We, we surpassed the second place church by over $1,000. And uh, so that was really great. Wonderful job. Wonderful job. Uh, today is healthy snacks. So uh, be aware of that when you go down to the fellowship hall. It's, there's, it's always good stuff. Tuesday, the building committee, if you're on the building committee, uh, they will be meeting at 6 o'clock, so please keep that in mind. Wednesday, the life of Christ uh, starts. Uh, what a rewarding experience. Uh, uh, expand your walk with the Lord and, and plan on attending on Wednesday's Life in Christ programs. You'll notice in your bulletin a couple of inserts. I just want to I just want to uh, make known of them. The youth group has got a couple of them. And, and one is the trick or, trick or trunk, or trunk or treat. <laughs> trick or trunk or trunk or treat. Any way you want to look at it. And the other one has to do with the youth group. So please keep those, uh, you know, in your minds. Mark them on the calendars. And also, uh, uh, this coming, is it this coming uh, Friday? Uh, this coming Friday is the fall dinner uh, for the UMW. Uh, look at that over. Uh, they're having pork lines, and I tell you what, it's the same as I think they had last year, and it was delicious last year, and I'm sure it will this year. And ladies, please remember to bring your pies by 3 p.m. on that Friday uh, for the dinner. Um, so, all right. Uh, is there any other announcements that I might have missed? If not, let's share what God wants us to hear. It's time to worship. Morning, church. I'm going to beat John Sayers to it. Okay. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Let us pray. Gracious God, we rejoice for you are king. You are the one who created us. You are the one who breathed into us the very breath of life. In your son, Jesus Christ, you have redeemed us in the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit. You sustain and keep us every day of our lives. Indeed, you are good all of the time. Sometimes we forget that. Sometimes we live as though we don't believe it. But you are good all of the time. And so as we come into this place to worship you, Help us to be reminded once again of your goodness, of your love, of your care. 
Help us to be reminded of the great salvation that is ours in Jesus Christ. Help us to be reminded that in your Holy Spirit, you are with us every moment of our lives. And so as we come into worship, and we are reminded of all of these things, may we then go out to live our lives as though we truly mean it, that God is good all of the time. In Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of celebration this morning is number 545, The Church is One Foundation. Please stand as you're able and join in singing. of faith this morning is found on page 881 as we read together the Apostles Creed page 881 where the Spirit of the Lord is there is the one true church apostolic and universal whose holy faith let us now declare I believe, I believe in God, in God, the, God Father the Father Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only Son our Lord who was, was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. And buried. The, the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, Take a few moments to greet those around you today. As you are being seated, please turn to hymn number 557, Blessed Be the Tide That Binds. <coughs> and this is also the noisy offering hymn for the food pantry. Blessed be the tide that binds. This is the day in which we celebrate October birthdays and wedding anniversaries. So if you have an October birthday, we ask that you please stand. Or if you're unable to stand, just raise your hand so that we can acknowledge you. All of the October birthdays. A few of them you notice are today. You look in the bulletin and they got birthdays today. Does anybody want us to tell us about which birthday you're having? You have two birthdays in your family. They're just not up here. Will and Jake, they're taking care of the... Will and Daniel, yeah. Will's taking care of uh, TV downstairs. And 18 and 5. All right. Anybody else want to tell us about your birthday? Let's sing to them today. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. God 
God bless you, and we wish you many, many more happy, happy birthdays. How about wedding anniversaries in October? Would you please stand or raise your hand? Now, there were a couple of special ones in the newspaper recently. Junior and uh, his wife, Pat, are celebrating 60 years later this week, right? And Dennis and Dorothy are celebrating 50, and it's today? Yeah. Anybody else want to tell us about your anniversary? 30 seconds or less. It's 40, and it's 40 years today. 40 years today. Anybody else? Yes. 41. 41. He goes with her. <laughs> Just for those of you who hadn't put that together yet. <laughs> Let's sing to everybody. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. God bless each of you and many, many more happy wedding anniversaries. Before we go to prayer, Melissa Finch is going to come forward and share something with us. Now I'm extremely nervous being up here. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my family and I moved down here late January this year. Um, long story short, I lost both my parents recently, only child, single mama too. And when we came down here, I didn't really know what was going to happen, not going to lie. No clue. We thought we had friends. Um, and we wanted to start going to church again. We had been going to church in Glen Ellen at the first congregational, if you want to call it going to church. What I mean by going to church is we would go. I would stay in the nursery every single Sunday. I would never go to sermon, ever. I didn't like it. I didn't want to be in the room with the people there. Um, Amber would occasionally go to Sunday school. Sometimes she'd stay with me in the nursery. So if you call that going to church, then yes, we did that. Um, so when we came down here, I was like, let me try the Methodist church again, because I'd originally been Methodist. And so we came here one day. And it was the best decision I could have ever made. Um, the very first day, everybody was so warm and friendly and loving. I couldn't believe it. I had never seen a church like that in my life. Because certainly the one that we were at in Glen Ellen wasn't like that. And I had been going to that since, I want to say I was in first grade. And I got confirmed there and all that fun stuff. And never had gotten that type of reception. So we um, got into some trouble down here. The situation that we were in turned very bad, very fast. Um, we bounced around quite a few times um, until finally, we just recently got a place in Cambridge in August. We finally got our own place. I'm working, I've been at Hillcrest for almost four, or four months now. It'll be, the 17th is my anniversary date, if you want to call it that. And when I tell people my story, one, they're like, well, how do you do it? Well, I just do because this is what I know. But two, I tell them, and I'm going to cry, that, sorry, if it weren't for my church, and I'm serious when I tell them this, we would literally be in my van, me and my girls. So I just want to thank you all from the bottom of our hearts for everything that you have done for us and continue to do. And we love all of each and every one of you. So thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Let us pray.
Gracious God, once again as we bow before you, it is with gratitude and it is with thankfulness, knowing that you are the one who provides us with everything that is necessary for life. You give us shelter, you give us clothing, you give us food, you give us many instances more than what are the basic necessities of life. You bless us spiritually and emotionally and financially. You undergird and keep our lives. In the very darkest hours of our lives and when we're walking through the deepest shadows of the valley of death, you indeed are with us. Your rod and your staff, they comfort us. They keep us. They sustain us. God, we are thankful for Melissa and her two daughters. Thankful that you sent, her, sent them our way. And thankful for the many ways in which this congregation has reached out to touch their lives and to support them. God, again, we thank you for Jesus and the salvation that is ours in him. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who guides and directs us into your paths of righteousness and holiness. We thank you for the church, people who surround us with love and care, people who rejoice when we rejoice and who weep with us as we weep, people who love us and care about us. We thank you for our families. We thank you for our friendship circles. We thank you for the scriptures that allow us to read about your wonderful love in Jesus. God, we again confess unto you that oftentimes in our lives we know that we fall short of your glory. We fall short of your purposes in our lives. Have mercy upon us, forgive us once again in your great love, and renew our lives that we may follow Jesus more closely. Again, we pray for our nation, God, especially we pray for President Obama and for congressional leaders as they seek to deal with some very difficult situations and circumstances. Grant them of your wisdom. Grant them of your knowledge, and may you so work in their lives that they may come together to find a common solution to big, big, big problems. God, most of all, we want to be faithful followers of Jesus. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. Grant us wisdom that we might know your will Grant us courage that we might always obey. All of these things we pray in his precious name as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare to receive our offering, let us hear these words from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength of an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their searching. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall, 
he lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. We are privileged today to be receiving two new members into our fellowship congregation. If you would please turn to page 38, and I'll ask Catherine Clark and Charlotte Clark King to come forward at this time.
Both of these ladies have been members of First United Methodist Church in uh, other lifetimes, I imagine it seems, but uh, we welcome them today. I was told the last time we received members that I forgot to actually introduce them to you. So uh, Kathy is on, on your left, and Charlotte's right here. And uh, Kathy today is being restored as a member of First United Methodist Church. And Charlotte's membership is being transferred from the First Congregational Church in Galva. So ladies, if you'll face me now. I ask you these two questions as we receive you into members of this church. As members of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? And as members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service? Would you please turn and face the congregation? Congregation, would you please stand? We're in the middle of page 38, number 15. As members of this, wait a minute, that's not right. Or at number 16, I'm sorry. <laughs> members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give, we give thanks, thanks for all that God has, has already given, given you, you, and we, we welcome you in Christian love. love. As members together with you in the body, in the body of, Christ, of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, Methodist Church we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the Church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Congregation, please be seated.
Our scripture lesson this morning begins with Acts 2, 43 through 47. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. And the gospel lesson comes from Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. Peter declares that Jesus is the Messiah. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but my, by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. It's time for the children to go to junior church, and as they're going, we'll sing 191, Jesus Loves Me, and we'll do verses 1 and 3. USC professor who wrote an article in the Christian Century tracing his religious pilgrimage which took him away from the church for a large part of his adult life and then back again. In the concluding paragraphs of the article he wrote, one thing that brought me back to the church was simply asking, what are the alternatives to the church? Where are the communities that sanction the pursuit of meaning and truth as a legitimate enterprise, that have material and personal resources to assist in this search, that provide regular occasion for, for confession of failures, that renew and inspire, that provide a setting where children are nurtured, where family members can be buried, where births can be celebrated, where social issues can be debated. There are a number of institutions with, that deal with one or several of these questions, but historically the church has demonstrated its ability to energize all of these activities. Over the next few weeks, I want us to think about 
the church. What is it? What are we supposed to be about? How do we do that? What's our vision for the church? Etc. I don't have the series of sermons about the church all planned out yet, so I don't know how many Sundays I'll be preaching about the nature of the church. But it'll be a few as we move along throughout this fall season. The church. As we read the as we sang the opening hymn, The Church is One Foundation, I almost thought to myself, well, this says it all. What can I say that's going to improve on the words of that particular hymn? So I thought about, well, let's just pronounce the benediction and we'll all go home. But you'd be disappointed if I did that, wouldn't you? <laughs> Us preachers, we got to preach whether somebody's already said it already or not. The church. What is it? In the book of discipline, the church is, a, was, is defined as the community of true believers under the lordship of Christ. It is a redemptive fellowship which exists for maintenance of worship, edification of believers, and redemption of the world. Those three things about the church and what it does is kind of in encapsulated there in that passage out of Acts that Karen read so well. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, to prayer. There was fellowship. There was the edification of the believers. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. They worshiped together. They built one another up. And then the last part of that definition out of the discipline says, for the conversion or the redemption of the world. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So fundamentally, the church, we're about worship. I was talking to somebody the other day who was sharing that they have a neighbor who, although that neighbor believes in God, they don't attend church. And somebody else in the group said, well, do they worship God? And it's possible for us to worship God by ourselves, but one of the things that makes growth in our Christian faith so vital is that we gather together and we corporately worship together. The church is about the worship of God as we come together. The church is about building up one another in the faith. The church is about redeeming the world, making disciples of Jesus Christ, bringing others into a faith position. But what about the church? What is the church about? Historically, the church has been defined and understood in, with a number of characteristics. One of the characteristics of the church is that we are both divine and we are human. The church is God's church. It's not our church. It's God's church. God has established the church. Jesus said, I will establish the church on this rock. And nothing will overcome the church. The church is divine. It is God. And yet we also know that the church is human. All of us are humans. We all have our human foibles. We all have our sins. We all make mistakes. And those foibles and those sins and those mistakes oftentimes get kind of messed in with the way the church operates in our world. But hopefully in those times when our humanness creeps in, we seek to find divine 
guidance and wisdom and solutions and problems to the midst of that mess. The church is visible and the church is invisible. Not everybody who is a Christian attends church services. That's what it means when we say that the church is invisible. The church is made up of all of the people around all of the world who have professed their faith in Jesus Christ. And yet the church is also visible. The visible church is made up of all of us, of all of the people who do participate in the life of a particular congregation and who are visibly involved in the work and the ministry of the kingdom of God. The church is Catholic, universal. You may have noticed the footnote in the Apostles' Creed when we read that part. I believe in the Catholic church. And there's a footnote. If you look at the footnote, it means, it, down at the footnote, it explains that Catholic means universal. The church is universal. It's all over the world. And yet the church is also local. It is the group of congregations in any given place. The church is all over the world, and yet the church is right here in Kiwani, given expression by several different local congregations in our own community. So we work with the understanding that we are a part of the universal church, but we do our ministry here in this locale in which we find ourselves. The church is also triumphant. That means that there are members of the church who have already gone on to glory. The church triumphant are those Christians who are now in heaven, who have served their Lord faithfully and at their death heard the words of Jesus Christ, Come into my kingdom, ye faithful. But the church is also militant. Those of us who remain are the ones who are actively involved in ministry, who are acting, still acting out the mission of the church to worship God, to edify believers, to redeem the world. We are the church. And the church is made up of tares and wheat. Jesus told a parable one time about uh, a man who went out and sowed a wheat field. As the wheat grew, he also noticed that there were some weeds growing in that wheat. And the servant said to the master, should we go out and pull up the weeds now that everything's growing together? And the master said, no. Because if you do that, if you pull out some of the weeds, invariably you'll also pull out some of the good wheat plants and destroy the good with the bad. Wait until the harvest, and when we harvest the field, then we'll separate the tares, the weeds, from the wheat, the good seed. And Jesus was talking about the kingdom of God, but it also applies to the church itself. There is also a personal application about that parable because each and every one of us have some personality traits that probably aren't the best in the world. But somehow or another, those personality traits that aren't the best in the world are kind of interconnected and intertwined with the characteristic personality traits of our lives that are pretty good ones. And it's hard for us to tear out the bad ones without disturbing, perhaps even tearing out the good ones. So Jesus says we're going to wait until the end of time and then we'll make that separation between the weeds and the wheat. That's an aspect of the church not only being divine but also human. In our humanness there are some weeds not only in our own lives, but in the life of the church as well. We are the church. We are the church. Jesus said to the disciples as they proclaimed him to be the Christ, the Son of the living God, 
as Peter made that proclamation, Jesus said, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell cannot overcome it. Someone has written that Jesus was the world's greatest optimist. He entrusted the church to a handful of disciples, aware of his own impending death, and he dared to talk about a church that would last forever. You and I are a part of that church. A part of the church that comes together to worship God. You and I are part of the church that comes together to encourage one another and support one another in our Christian walk. You and I are part of that church that is both divinely inspired and yet full of human foibles and quirks and misdeeds at times. But we're a part of the church entrusted with the task of redeeming the world and the sure knowledge that the church cannot be overcome by anything that would seek to destroy it. Because the church The church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. Back in 1993, somewhere in there, the world watched as three gray whales, ice-bound off Point Barrel, Alaska, floated battered and bloody, gasping for breath at a hole in the ice. Their only hope? Somehow to be transported past, somehow to be transported past the ice pack to open sea. Rescuers began cutting a string of breathing holes about 20 yards apart in the six inch thick ice. For eight days, the rescuers coaxed the whales from one hole to the next, mile after mile. Along the way, one of the trio vanished and was presumed dead, but finally, with the help of icebreaker ships, the whales Putu and Siku swam to freedom. The author telling the story says that in a way, worship is a string of breathing holes the Lord provides his people. Battered and bruised in a world frozen over with greed, selfishness, and hatred, we rise for air in church, a place to breathe again, to be loved and encouraged until that day when the Lord forever shatters the ice cap. Melissa and I had been talking about uh, her sharing in church uh, for several weeks now. She had actually wanted to do it earlier, a few weeks ago, and then we had something, so much else going on in church that it didn't work out, and then I was gone for a couple of Sundays, and she wanted to do it when uh, I was here. And I'm so grateful that uh, the Lord worked it out for her to share today. Because as we look at Melissa's life and Amber and Lily and how this congregation has surrounded them with love and care, we truly see the church at work. We see those air holes working, giving us breath, renewing our lives, and assuring us that we are part of God's church whose foundation is Jesus Christ the Lord. And nothing can conquer that which is God's. Let us pray. Eternal and gracious God, we thank you for your church universal, but we also thank you for this congregation, this local church in this particular place. We thank you for the many ways in which we come together to worship you. We thank you for the many ways in which we nurture one another, encouraging one another and supporting one another, helping to give life and air holes to one another. And we thank you, God, that you are using this congregation and you are using these people corporately and individually to bring others to faith in Jesus Christ. We give you thanks, O God, and pray that you will help us indeed be the church 
who reaches out beyond this place to bring others to faith in Jesus Christ, to reach out in his love to those who do not know him as Savior and as Lord. Use us, O oh God, as the instruments of your love and of your hope and of your faith in our world, in our community. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Our hymn of sending is number 578, God of Love and God of Power. Please stand as you're able and join in singing. Follow her. <laughs> Seventy eight. <laughs> mistakes than that in one one week let alone 10 years so good how'd those low notes work for you john uh, higher yeah. than better yeah i <laughs> uh, want to bring you up to date real quick as you see the uh, work on the uh, masonry out in the out the bricks the tuck pointing is moving along and uh, but i do want to remind you that and i'll be talking about this more at length in the future that uh, we did at church conference in August, we did approve a three-year program that allows us, or uh, that uh, we're going to end up borrowing up to $600,000, or, or two, yeah, $600,000, a little bit more than that. We will be doing a capital campaign 
uh, in order to try to offset those costs. So uh, that will be coming down the pike. I encourage you to uh, pray about what God may be asking you to do in that regard. And uh, we have already had to uh, start borrowing money from the bank in order to pay the masonry uh, work being done. But we'll uh, be talking more about that uh, in the near future. You'll be hearing more about that. Now that charge conference is almost behind me, uh, we can turn our attention to the capital funds campaign and move ahead with that. May you go out this day as you have been touched by the life and the love of the church to live out being the church in our world. Amen. Amen. Amen.